I feel like I need a shot of vodka for this episode. Hold on. So I wouldn't normally condone day drinking. If I'm gonna have to talk about wedding, I'm gonna drink vodka. And if I'm gonna drink vodka, I'm gonna drink Hansen's of Sonoma. They didn't sponsor me. It's just simply my favorite vodka. This is a limited edition flavor. Meyer lemon. Nostrovia. I mean, it's weird because I feel married. We've been together for over seven years now. Those applications and those forms, they don't care if you have a boyfriend. You're in the married box or the single box. So yeah, I'm single, technically, on paper. I would make a great wife. I'm a catch, but I met someone who is like a slippery frog in his culture. Okay, so for example, he has an aunt who just got married after being with her boyfriend for 60 years. They felt like after 60 years, they earned the right to get married. Like, I don't have 60 years. I mean, maybe by unlocking all of these secrets to aging backwards, I will have 60 years, but it's iffy. Maybe there's a reason. What is the reason? So that I can create single girl dinner because I'm true to the brand. So out of the entire Sex in the City cast, I relate most to Carrie because A, she's a writer, B, we're basically twins in terms of our inner monologue, and C, like Big called her not the marrying kind, I think we're both not the marrying kind. He ended up marrying Natasha, but Natasha was like the perfect trophy wife. Carrie had curly hair, Natasha had like silky straight hair. I could be a Natasha, but I have a Carrie inside. It's complicated. So one time I went on a date, he asked me what my fantasy wedding would be. And I said, it wouldn't make sense. And he said, no, just tell me. So my fantasy wedding is to get married at the Rothko Chapel in my hometown of Houston, Texas. It's such a beautiful space. Minimalist. I like that. And then fly in a private jet back to New York City and have like this fabulous dinner at the Four Seasons restaurant in the pool room. And he was like, that's doable. And I was like, there's nothing on my ring finger, FYI. I'm just kidding. I'm feeling the vodka. A long time ago, I visited a friend at her office. They had this ritual that every time a new guest came to visit the office, they would all gather around a big table. The guest would come up with a question that everyone could answer. The question that I came up with was, who would play you in a movie about your life? Finally, it came back to me. And I always remembered in college, a friend of mine told me that I was very Parker Posey, that indie actress. I love her movies. She always plays these really eccentric characters. So I said Parker Posey. But then my friend said, really? I always thought of you as a Diane Keaton. I asked her like, why? And she said, it's kind of like that movie Something's Gotta Give because you're a writer and you always wear turtlenecks. Something's Gotta Give is one of my favorite movies. Diane Keaton plays a successful playwright who is divorced and has this amazing home in the Hamptons. She's the kind of woman who just whips up blueberry pancakes at midnight or an omelet on a rainy night. And we could just eat right out of the pan at the kitchen island in our bathrobes. The first time I watched that movie, I said to myself, I hope that I become a successful writer and have my own house by the sea and just be creative. That was the vision for my life. It wasn't making sugar cookies with the kids at Christmas time. It was kind of weird. So in the movie, she does end up finding her soulmate, like her real soulmate, but she's in her 60s. Interestingly enough, Diane Keaton in real life is in her 70s and has never been married. So I went down this rabbit hole when I was doing research on Diane Keaton 
And I saw this speech that she gave at a tribute to Warren Beatty. Some people don't know this, but they were actually in a relationship together during the filming of this movie called Reds, and they had a five-year relationship. In her biography, she said that he was her one true love. He was kind of known to be the ultimate bachelor, but he gave it all up when he met Annette Benning. Anyway, as Diane is giving this speech, Annette Benning is sitting next to him. I, I really do want to thank you for, for giving me the memory of a kind of love that I never imagined possible until I played your Louise. A love that transformed my very ordinary life into something extraordinary. I will never, 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 never forget that train station in Spain with my Walkman blasting Bob Dylan in order to drown out your direction. I don't know how many takes it was, maybe 39, I don't know, when you said yet again the dreaded word action. When suddenly, I, I, I just don't know how to say it other than to say that there was this sweet anguish of love that I felt when I saw your face in a moment shared in time together. Thank you, Warren, and congratulations. It's so bittersweet. When she was asked why she never got married, she said that she just felt like she was an oddball. And that's kind of like Carrie, too. She was so upset when she saw that Big got engaged to Natasha, and her friends had to remind her that she's special, she's unique, and she needed to find someone who understood her. Those are the friends that you need to have in your life. Why her? One word. Hubble. Oh my god! Hubble! Who's Hubble? What are you, an alien? How could you not have seen the way we were? Check film. Robert Redford is madly in love with Barbara Streisand, but he can't be with her because she's too complicated and she has wild curly hair. So he leaves her and marries this simple girl with straight hair. I always, always, always cry at the last scene of that movie when she sees him in front of the hotel with his new wife. The simple girl. And then the music comes in. Memories. Oh my god, it's so good. Like the corners of my mind. Misty watercolored memories of the way we were.